The affordable smartphone market has exploded, and one company leading the charge is Xiaomi, or more specifically, two of Xiaomi's sub-brands, that's Poco and Redmi. I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and I have two of the most affordable phones right here, the Poco F3 and the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The Poco costs more than the Redmi, so which should you buy? Hopefully in this video, I'll help you decide. And while you're here, if you could hit that like button, tap subscribe and the notification bell, that would be wonderful. So what's the same? With these two phones being part of the same company, there are plenty of similarities. Both run MIUI 12, Xiaomi's Android skin, built on top of Android 11, and for the most part, they're the same. There are subtle differences in software, but for the most part, they look, feel, and act like each other. The one difference I did notice is that Poco doesn't seem to have the option for navigation gestures. After so long not using the old school Android buttons, it's weird being forced to do so. If I'm wrong and they are hidden somewhere that I haven't managed to find yet, please do let me know in the comments. Now in design, most important features are the same. Put them side by side or hold them both and you'll struggle to notice any major differences, but they do exist. So while they're built on the same frame and are largely the same size and weight, give or take a few millimeters and grams, there are subtle indicators that they're not exactly the same. For instance, the cheaper Redmi phone has a 3.5mm port in the top edge, where the Poco doesn't have one. And while the camera lens arrangement is almost the same, the design of the housing is square on the Redmi and round on the Poco. Placement of the SIM tray is different too. The F3 has the tray built into the bottom edge, while the Redmi has it in the top of the left edge. But more crucially, it also features a slot for a micro SD card, so you can expand the storage, as well as being dual SIM compatible. Both feature glass backs and plastic frames, and even have identical fingerprint sensors built into the slim power wake button on the right edge, just below the volume rocker. The fingerprint sensor is really responsive and has unlocked the phone quickly and efficiently the entire time I've been testing them. Sometimes you can accidentally touch it though. Do that enough times with the wrong finger or the wrong part of your finger and you'll make it think you've failed to register properly. That forces you then to use a pin or password to log in instead. Now the first hint that the Poco is a more premium phone comes when you start typing on the keyboard. With the vibration feedback on, you'll feel a much more subtle and precise haptic response from the F3, while the Note 10 Pro has a more standard vibrator mode, so buzzing underneath your fingers. Now, switching to displays, and again, you might struggle to see much difference. Both have the same size and resolution. It's an AMOLED Full HD Plus panel boasting up to 120Hz refresh rates. When it comes to sharpness and brightness, there's nothing to separate them. Not really. Where we saw the biggest difference was in contrast and colour performance. The Redmi was warmer by default and seemed to have a bit too much contrast. The Poco screen showed things in a way that was a lot more subtle and natural. Redmi was a little harsh by comparison with its crushed blacks often meaning you lose detail on darker colours and in the shadows. And in the highlights too. So, spec fans, it's here in the battery and the performance that you're going to be paying most of your attention probably. Poco F3 has the more powerful Snapdragon 870 processor, plus UFS 3.1 storage for fast processing and read-write speeds. The Redmi's no slouch though and has a Snapdragon 732G processor and slightly slower solid-state storage. Numbers on a page are one thing, but real daily performance is another. And that's what really matters. And it's definitely one area you can tell the difference. Unsurprisingly, the almost flagship processor in the Poco phone results in a snappier and more responsive feeling phone. In the general interface, they both feel pretty much the same. But once you start loading things like games or the camera interface, the Redmi lags behind slightly. Switching between shooting modes in the camera takes a bit longer on the Redmi, just as an example. It's not terrible, but if your priority is speed and fluidity, it doesn't deliver in quite the same way. Where it does deliver in bucket loads, however, is in battery life. Its larger capacity battery and the software's aggressive battery management mean it's not too difficult to get two days from the Note 10 Pro, even with a couple of hours gaming thrown in every day. Still, neither has bad battery life. The F3 will comfortably get through even the busiest of days and make it partway through a second. So again, on cameras there are similarities, but they're not identical. Both phones have a primary ultra-wide and macro sensor. The Note 10 Pro also has a low-res depth sensor. Where the biggest difference comes in though is with the primary camera. The Poco has a 48 megapixel sensor, where the Redmi has a 108 megapixel sensor, which is slightly larger. Of course, both phones pixel bin down to lower resolutions when you're shooting in automatic mode. 
Now, you might think the bigger sensor would produce the better images, but that's actually not the case. On the surface, they're quite similar, at least when you compare colours. Where we noticed a major difference was in the quality of the detail. The Poco F3's photos just seemed sharper and more realistic most of the time. That carries through to when you enable 2 times digital zoom as well. Ultra-wide performance was similar on both, but the two struggle with blur at times and often produce images that look suboptimal, putting it kindly. Now overall, in truth, both of these phones really do punch above their weight when you consider how much each of them costs. The Redmi Note 10 Pro is an absolute bargain for £249 in the UK, and the F3 gives you a close to flagship level performance in a phone that costs just over £300. If you decide to spend the extra on the F3, you won't regret it. The F3 is snappier, smoother and more responsive, has a better primary camera and better display performance. However, if you care more about long battery life and having practical things like a headphone port and expandable storage, you can't go far wrong with the Note 10 Pro. It's a stunning budget phone. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. You can find me and follow me there, ask me any questions you want or use the comments down below. Hit like if you like this video and subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.